Hello everybody and welcome to VFR. Today we are back with our old friend the H-Jet. Um, there's been a few pretty big updates to the airplane and so I wanted to, to um, remake this full flight guide to um, just show all of the um, the updated stuff. This plane's been updated a few times. There's some slight differences in the ergonomics uh, but it, everything is mostly the same. So if you've learned it on the um, from the V1 guide that'll probably be okay you'll figure it out uh, but this is going to be with the updated you know, buttonology and symbology and everything so let's hop on in all right so here we are on our cold and dark h jet let me turn everything off in the hardware clicking to remove the yoke we want to go turn on our batteries and apply external power to the airplane now we've got the door open we'll let the um, garment come up the things that have been added to this airplane in particular, um, the latest update with the G3000 from um, from the update. So the updated G3000 from the sim has now been included in this uh, aircraft, as well as some rearrangements to the PFD. And um, we've also had a, v, a um, E2 update, which adds a more capable version to the airplane. So let's go into sim options real quick. You can see we've got our main door open, GPU open, and we've got E2 mode, which adds auto throttle and an extra, I believe, 500 pounds of useful load to the airplane. Uh, it will also add an auto spoiler deploy when brakes are applied on landing. So a couple of few fun things here, but the big one, auto throttle and um, as if you remember from the last guide, we only had the cruise speed control on the non-E2. But you can turn that mode off and just fly the regular one if you want. You'll see we'll get the old panel back. So if you just want to fly classic HJet without an auto throttle, you are free to do so. And so just like the old ones, um, going into our load manager, we're going to set up a flight with a single pass, single pilot and probably four passengers. We're going down... To, we are uh, here at Houston Executive, uh, KEDC, and we're heading down to Houston Hobby, KHOU. Not a long flight, should be about 45 minutes, but we will, um, I'm going to add a, just a little bit more fuel, just in case. But you can see we could go much higher with this, with this setup. So going to our initialization, we can run our pre-flight checks. Running the stick shaker. And doing a lights test, just to make sure everything is on. Okay, so that's done. So we're waiting fuel, we're just going to pull all this in from the sim. And we now have a sync all button. But we're going to basically work through the same worksheets here. Fuel on board. So there's a little bit more to the worksheets here. Uh, I don't have a super great flight plan. But we're not going to go into that yet. But that is available to us. All right, and then speed bugs. We're going to get our speed bugs from the sim and turn all of them on. V1, 111, rotating 115. V2, 120. And then we get a new bug for VFTO. All right, so we got the plane initialized. Let's go start our engines now and get set up to go. We're going to start following the checklist here. You can bring the checklist up on either side of the um, of the MFD. I have a physical button mapped to it so that I can tick off these things through X's and O's and a script. Uh, but if you don't, it's going to be this button here which also lets you scroll through different ones. So if you miss something or you want to do a specific thing, you can click it off there and click it. If your checklist is over here on this side, it's the exact same thing, just with this button instead. All right, so we've got battery on, oxygen. Over here, we want to see normal, checked and on and normal. Now pressurization is all normal electrical on and everything is showing normal um, our ELT down here we're seeing it in the norm mode nose wheel steering down here 
normal. Landing gear, down. My lever will work too. And the alternate gear release handle is fully in. That's right here. Parking brake is set. Flaps are up. Check down here, just checking flap lever works. Thrust levers are in the cutoff position. Speed brake is retracted, we can test it. We may need to have it pressurized. Ice protection is normal and off. We've got engine any ice off for now. We will um, leave it like that for now. Fuel panel, we're seeing everything in norm. So here, here, and here, those three dials. Trim panel, we want to see everything in norm. Nothing weird, nothing turned off to the side. Windshield heat panel, right over here. Again, norm. Pneumatic panel, you're right, norm. Then we just want to check our glare shield panel. Glare shield panel. Make sure everything is dark. We're not seeing any lights, anything we don't expect to see. Um, the chime is normal in the avionics we have initialized. We're going to the next step. So before we start engines, we'll do a passenger briefing and program in our flight plan. All right, so before we program it in, here's our flight plan. It's gonna be pretty simple. We're going out of Austin Executive here, Kilo Echo Delta Charlie, and then we are flying over here to the industry VOR. And then we'll head direct to Sealy. That's also a um, Victor way airway that we can put in here. We will practice that. And then from Sealy, we will go directly to Houston. We're expecting to land on the 1-3 right. And we'll just probably just set up for the ILS into 1-3 right there. Easy enough. So we won't get very high today. Um, we'll probably only cruise about 18,000 uh, feet. Flight level 180. Because it shouldn't be a very long flight. Well, it'll be about 40 minutes. All right, so programming it again, it's just like any of your G3000 things. We're going to add the Unru waypoint for the industry VOR, which is India Delta Uniform. And we want industry, and I can actually scoot over a little bit. Industry South Central US makes sense. Then we want to load airway Victor 222. Sealy exit. Not that that's super necessary here, but Victor 222 Sealy. And then we're heading into Houston Hobby where we can add our procedure. So coming up here to procedures, no departure, no arrival today, but the approach, we will do the ILS for runway 13 right via vectors. We'll vector ourselves over there. And um, if you want to put in the minimums, we can. For the ILS 13 right, we have uh, minimums of 296. And then if we go back to full and just um, zoom out on our map a little bit, you're controlling, you can see we're going Industry, Sealy, and then we'll need to make a little turn here to pick up the ILS and fly into Houston Hobby 13 right. So again, functionally, nothing's really changed here. You've just got some updated symbology and updated things to look at. For the passenger briefing, that'll satisfy. We're going to fly off of runway 13 here at Austin and just head direct to the industry VOR and pick that up. Flight level 180 today. Rudder pedals are adjusted, seat belts uh, are adjusted and secure. We can check our seat belt signs are on by going here. System controls and interior lights. We'll get both chimes there. We can close up our doors now as so we get ready for the engine start again. Sim options. We can close the main door. Parking brakes are still set and pulled out. Cast messages, we have um, external powers on. We've got low fuel pressure and of the, other, the other things that we would expect to see if we don't have an engine running. So we're going to get rid of the GPU here. We need 23.5 volts. We have 25. 
And now we're going to do the engine start. Now engine start is very complicated here. We're going to press the start button and monitor. At an N1 of about 10, we're going to take it out of idle cutoff and move the throttles to idle. Okay, so that's uh, the right end to start. Let's start the left. Again, looking for N1 of about 10 and no big red flashing lights there. And we've got it. So engine starter, engine instruments look okay. Engine anti-ice as required. Um, it is not too cold today. We're using a uh, weather preset that is very nice weather. But if it was cold like it is in the winter, um, we would use engine anti-ice on at this point. Um, external power disconnected and flight controls seem reasonable. Yep. It's ready to go. So before taxi. Uh, wing anti-ice as required. We're going to leave everything in normal again for now. Transponder. We need to be squawking. We will squawk 2,000. And we're going to go ahead and put it on altitude reporting. As if we were on VAT sim. Our flight ID, um, we could confirm that. Flight plan has been entered. Nav source. We need to make sure that we are in FMS. So that's one thing that if you take off and you hit nav mode and you haven't checked, that will catch you out. We need to make sure that's an FMS. Um, altimeters, I believe it's 2992 today. It is flaps. We're going to do flaps in the um, takeoff slash approach um, setting. They make it nice and easy for you. Speed brake, let's check it. Speed brake is showing extended. And we've got the flaps out there. So that's a good speed brake check. Cabot signs, seatbelt signs are on, no smoking is on, and we can release the parking brake and taxi on out. So we're going to taxi out. Austin Executive is pretty simple. We're going to taxi to runway 13 straight ahead of us via Alpha. Executive traffic. Honda Jet. 420 Hotel Foxtrot taxiing runway 13 via Alpha Executive. So, before takeoff checklist, flaps, set takeoff trims, we need to set them for takeoff. Get it down to the um, small green sliver down there on the PFD. My trim isn't working if I hold it down, so that's all. But the only reason I'm doing this, you could, I'm sure, set it up better. It's usually around 3 or 4. So 3.8. We'll go 4 just for a nice even number. Trim set takeoff speed break is retracted. Cast messages. Uh, we have cabin power off. We can turn cabin power on. Um, An ECS temp control is in manual, which is okay for me. So our navigation, we are on FMS. We do want to get our flight directors turned on. And um, we're going to set a heading of runway heading of 126. And an initial climb of about 5,000.
So flight guidance all set up, flight directors are set up. Taking takeoff and landing data has been confirmed. Takeoff briefing, we are going to take off here from one minute runway 13 Austin Executive. We're gonna fly runway heading uh, until we uh, and climb maintain 5,000. And after that, we're going to um, go direct to the industry VOR and follow our flight plan from there. Um, V1 today is going to be 111 knots. We're gonna rotate at 115 and um, we are going flying at, it will accelerate to V2 of 120. Uh, if anything goes wrong, we see any red lights, any um, anything anything that we're uncomfortable with, anything at all, below V1, we will abort the takeoff by doing full um, full brakes, cutting the power, and then putting out speed brakes. Anything above V111 knots, we are going to take our problems into the air, go flying, and um, climb to, we'll accelerate to V2 and climb, continue climbing on out to about a thousand feet, and then we will assess our, um, assess our options. Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet, but is good to know, is we can set up VNAV, especially on something simple like this. Um, so here we have industry 5,000. That would be fine. We'll go flight level 180 at industry. And we can alter all that stuff, and then at Sealy, we'll also hit. Um, we can say we want to be at 10,000 feet at Sealy as we go into the um, as we go into the approach. Here in the VNAV page, you can adjust all the VNAV settings, um, things like the altitude speed limit. Your climb schedule, we're going to do maximum rate today, but we could do a cruise climb or other different climbs. Cruise, we're going to be looking to cruise at 270 knots for the auto throttle, and then this is going to be your descent schedule, the same deal. And you can check out the profile here for our VNAV. You can see just checking our ILSs now, we have it coming in Royce at or above 2000. And then we'll be flying down to runway 13 right at Houston. All right, so we've done our takeoff reading, um, our weather radar and everything, and ice protection are set as required. We'll go to the next um, takeoff, which checklist is going to be after takeoff. But we will hide the check checklist for now and just go over to map. And if you want to make that full screen, you can click full. You can click it on either side, and that will just bring it to the full position. All right, everything looks ready to go. We are going to throttle up and roll out onto the runway. Okay, so now for the takeoff, we are simply going to bring our throttles forward into the takeoff detent, and we will release the brakes. Airspeed's alive. V1, rotate. Positive right, gear up. Same flight level change, setting up our heading. And then just like any other autopilot, we're gonna turn the yaw damper on and make sure we have that flight level change here. It's going to try and maintain a speed of now 200 knots in the climb. We're going to bring the throttles back to MCT, make sure flaps are up, gear is up, and we're on our way. So now if we want to go direct to the industry VOR, we just click direct to, it's got industry right there. We'll go direct. And we can click nav mode, and that's good. So now altitude, we can raise that up. We're going to go up to flight level 180. and 250 knots. I 
And you will notice that the speed bugs here, or the um, the speeds are actually going according to the the profile that we set up. So it's going for a max rate climb at 210 knots up to flight level 180. And you also get your um, your some new symbology here on the PFD, where you now have the altitude that you've put in your flight planner right here for the for that waypoint. So kind of cool. A lot of small things that have been added, especially on this with this new suite, the new avionics update. It's pretty cool to see in the sim now. We'll leave it at max continuous till we get to cruise, and then we'll back it off as as required for speed, and we'll test out the auto throttle. All right, so we have leveled off here, and um, you can see that the speed bug has automatically come up to 270 knots. I didn't have to do anything because we've programmed that into the FMS. So now I can press auto throttle, and it should hold, or aim to hold, adjusting the power to hold 270 knots. And you can see we have uh, this auto throttle, this AT indication here, showing that it's at, the airplane's controlling auto throttle to you know, match that speed. So we're gonna ride the barber pole here, but um, I don't have to fiddle with it. Now again, if you want to do cruise speed control, you want a little more manual of an experience, you can back it off and go back turning off E2 mode. This is an E2 feature of the Honda Jet E2 version. So it's pretty cool that we got the update and now you have some different options for your level of automation. At this point, we can also turn on VNAV. So now we're fully, fully enabled. And now the aircraft should automatically descend to 10,000 feet to cross um, to cross our next waypoint after we hit Imperial or Industrial, apologies. Once we hit Industrial, we'll go down to Sealy and we should cross Sealy at 10,000 feet because we programmed that into our flight plan here. The airplane should do all that automatically. So if you want to see your um, map settings and you want to see this vertical situation display, this kind of side profile of your VNAV, you can come into here. You want to go to inset window and vert situation display. You want that to be on. That will bring up this window and that shows us here we're going to hit industry, top of descents a little bit after that to get down to 10,000 and it's a little bit steep down to Royce. We can vector and hold as needed. So one more thing to note, if you do need to take control of your speed, so you're at 270, but ATC tells you back to 260, you have to click this small white ring here, um, this outer ring to manual, and now I can adjust the manual speed here. If it's purple, that shows that it is, um, that is being controlled by the FMS. When it goes blue, you're in manual mode. So we can take it back to, you know, 265 knots, or we can just click it back into, um, you can sync it to your normal speed, or you can click it back to 270 knots. If you're interested in using the cruise speed control functionality of the um, non-E2 version, check out our previous full flight guide for the Honda Jet non-E2. It's a little finicky, but it's also fun. So passing the industry VOR now, I'm going to lower our altitude to 10,000 feet. And then VNAV should take us down when it's ready. Now again, you don't have to use the VNAV if you want to fly it all, you know, with your other autopilot tools. That is totally up to you. So you can see now we've hit top of descent. We're getting a flashing V path, meaning it's going to try and follow the vertical speed path. Now you can see we're actually a little fast. Um, our barber pole, we're into the barber pole a little bit. The auto throttle is correcting for that, but it's not, you know, pre-correcting for that. So something to keep an eye on. Um, be ready to take manual control here because you do need to you know, make sure that that doesn't run away on you. It will catch up, but it's not not necessarily as refined of a tool as something in your your seven three. But you can see we're now doing our descent at about 1,800 feet per minute, or our schedule down to 10,000 feet.
And then the ILS for runway 13 right is going to be off to our left. So we'll make a left turn, we'll program that in now. We'll make a left turn heading 030 to get down to 3,000 feet. All right, so we're bearing down on Sealy here. Once we pass that, we'll throw it into heading mode and start slowing down. So I'm going to turn off VNAV, go to altitude hold at 10,000 feet. Keep going the rest of the way down there. And we're also going to take manual speed control. Bringing the speed back to 250 knots, just to prepare ourselves for our approach into Houston Hobby. The auto throttle is still doing its thing, which is good. And now, we're going to hit heading mode and zoom out a little bit on the map. If we can, we can see the line, the final approach course there. Jabs is at a 10 mile final. So we're gonna descend 3000 feet. Basically perpendicular and then we'll turn in as necessary. Jabs is a 15 mile final, so that's actually pretty good. mode there. All right, so running through our approach checklist, seatbelt signs are on, everything, everyone's seats are adjusted. Passenger briefing is completed. We're going to be landing on 13 right here at Houston Hobby. Cabin signs on, avionics are set up, landing data is configured. Um, we can do our V-speeds though. So in here, if we go to speed bugs, we actually want to turn our takeoff off and our V approach on 122 for V approach and V ref of 117. So that's good. Cast messages are um, okay. Um, we've done the approach briefing and then we're, once we're into range for our flaps, we will do um, flaps 20. Still going 250 knots. We can bring that back now. 210 as we get closer. Again, still fully auto throttled up. So we can continue our descent down to 2,000 feet. Since that is what is shown on the chart, we'll do flight level change at 210 knots. Again, everything's uh, manually controlled now. We're still using the auto throttle though. Uh, we've got our gears, maximum gear extension speed of 120 knots. And then we're going to have start with our flaps at 160 knots. All right, so we're going to descend now to 2,000 feet, pick up our final approach course in uh, once we hit jabs, and flaps, takeoff approach flaps and gear are all good once we're down below 200 knots. So once we turn final, we'll go 180 or so, and then we can go flaps and our first layer, or we can go gear down our first level of flaps. Landing flaps then are limited uh, below 160. Now that we're cleared for our approach two, we can arm approach mode. Clicking on the approach button. As we come into jabs. All right, so last thing. We now need to um, come in here. We can activate our vectors to final. And now we're heading for Royce. We don't have the localizer yet. That should come in, but it switched us over to loc mode. We're at 2,000 feet, heading straight for um, Royce. Now it would help to program in the ILS frequency, so 111.3.
which would help in a final course of 131. So we're going to click uh, approach mode. We're getting localizer, and we will pick up the glide slope here in a little bit. You can see the green diamond. We're still well below. Gear can come down, and we can go to approach flaps. We're not quite to Royce yet. We can get, actually get rid of the VNAV, too, if you want. Uh, to brief the mist approach real quick, we're climbing to 800 feet, then right turn uh, to 2,200 feet direct to the Skulls VOR, 113.0. So I'm going to keep bringing the speed back now. We'll get back below our final landing flaps. Speed, if you do need speed brakes, you can use that. This airplane does slow down pretty well, though. We've got the glide slope starting to come in now, and we're crossing Royce. So that's glide slope, and we're at about a uh, seven mile final. So we'll bring our speed back to our final approach speed, which is gonna be about 120 knots. And all in all, it's doing a pretty good job of, um, of maintaining the profile. We're below 160, so we can go full flaps now. And since this is an H-Jet and not a 7.3, let's take the auto throttle off just to be prepared. Autopilot. And fly it manually. So now just letting that speed come back even further. 126. It is a slow approach speed, especially for a big jet like this. Well, not a big jet, but a small jet like this. I always get a little uncomfortable going down into 120s with the jets. But we want to make sure that we're following the glide slope too. Now, important tips for landing. This thing will float, so or it did before. We'll see how much it's changed. The flight, if the flight model has changed at all. But typically, it's floating, so you want to pull power and just let that airplane come on down. It's not um, too finicky, but it will run away. We do have um, auto speed brakes deploying um, when you apply the brakes now, too. So we should see the speed brakes come out as we come down. That's another E2 feature. A little fast. A little low. Which is fine. Minimums. Those are minimums, 200 feet AGL. Now I'm going to pull power and just flare and let it come on down. And you see our speed brakes have auto-deployed. And we're just going to roll on out to the end here. So welcome to Houston Hobby, everybody. We could probably make the... Right here on... Uh, no, Quebec. It's okay, nothing too fancy. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's been added really takes the last leg of automation out. If you want to use that, you don't have to. But definitely, um, you know, you get full VNAV experience, which is nice in a jet like this, if you want to fly on Vatsim or something. But you still, I think more so than even others, you need to be ready to, uh, ready to intervene. All 
Alright, so back here at parking. If you want to shut down your engines, we just move the throttles back to the idle cutoff position. Flaps are all up. Everything else is good. We can come back here and put the... Um, we can turn off our seatbelt signs and all that stuff. Coming into interior lights. Let them get up. And then sim options to open our doors and turn on the GPU. And so that's really it. Now um, that's an updated look at the H jet. Again, if you're interested in some more of the non E2 features, definitely go check out our um, our old video. Some of this, some of the um, the manipulation of the MFTs and PFTs is going to be a little bit different, but you're smart. You'll be able to figure it out. So, um, yeah, definitely. So check that out if you're interested in some of those other features. Uh, but this is definitely a very, um, it adds kind of that last step of automation to the E2 version, which is pretty cool. Um, again, you need to be kind of paying attention to it because it will overshoot your overspeeds and other things. So just be ready, be mindful. You're gonna have to program some more stuff in, but it's, um, it's definitely a pretty impressive feature set and um, loving the new avionics. It's all good stuff. Hopefully this helps you guys get up and run with the H-Jet. And I know I, I enjoy this. And um, it's Cousin Division Jet a lot here in Sim. So thank you all for coming. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for other places, things we should fly, drop them in the comment section below. All the usual YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, helps the channel a great deal. Thank you all for coming along. Hope you guys enjoy your H-Jet flying. And have, a, have some safe flying.